to LAFE TV. I'm Carrie Loke, LAFE's Executive Director. Have you ever wanted to learn how to play chess? I know I have. Well, whether you have a chess board at home or you're going to do it online through a game, we encourage you to watch this lesson and learn how to play. I'd like to thank Adam Brody of Strategic Kids for bringing this lesson to us today. Also, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Risu Restaurant, which is opening soon in downtown Long Beach. Our sponsors make these episodes possible by supporting our teachers in developing the lessons. All right, take it away, Adam. This is Adam Brody with Academic Chess and Strategic Kids, and here's a lesson for Leif TV. Welcome to the amazing world of chess, where each piece has its own superpower, and you control their destiny. Today I'm going to be teaching you all about the Royal Game, which is over a thousand years old. We're going to have a ton of fun walking through this game together through several lessons, and I cannot wait to share with you all the amazingness that is chess. So without further ado, here we go. Back when chess started, about a thousand years ago, when they would have a battle, they would line up on a battlefield, one army on one side, one army on the other side, and someone would yell, CHARGE! Now when you were in one of those battles, where would you want to be? Would you want to be in the front, or would you want to be in the back? If you said you want to be in the back, you're probably correct, because the front was the most dangerous place to be, with swords coming at you full speed. So you really like to be in the back, where you're nice and safe. These guys in the front were called the pawns, and they had the toughest job in chess. Now when the game started, or the battle started, they had lots of energy. So in chess, a pawn is actually able to jump one or two only on its first move. After that, they get really tired, and they only go one at a time. In the game of chess, white always goes first, and then black makes their move. You can see he double jumped because it's his first move. Can he double jump again? The answer is no. He can only go one at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Now, in the game of chess, pawns are a very strange piece in this one way. They do not capture the same way they move. You see in the old days, they have this small little shield that would protect the front side, but not their side. So you can almost imagine pawns marching straight going boom, 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 boom. Marching straight forward, but attacking through the corners. And that is exactly how pawns attack in chess. If it's white's turn to move here, what would he be able to do? He'd be able to capture that pawn. So after black makes his move, I will demonstrate our first capture of the day. Boom. When you capture in chess, it's like Mario Brothers. You stomp on the enemy piece, and you take him off the board just like that. And we have our first captured pawn. So pawns in chess are amazing pieces, but they are really weak. They're only worth one point in the way we count the value of a chess piece, because they're not very strong, and they're not very fast, but they are important, and you start out with eight of them. Now, if a pawn is brave enough to survive the battle and get to the other side of the battlefield, it can actually become anything it wants. It can become a rook, a knight, a bishop, or a queen. All right, it can't quite become anything, but it can't become a king, and it cannot become an aardvark. But it can become a rook, knight, bishop, or queen. In general, you will want to turn your pawn into a queen. All right, so let's look at some of our other pieces now. The next piece we're going to look at is called the Rook. See, Rooks in the old days would stay on the top of the castle and they look for bad guys, far and wide. And they would shoot their bows and arrows straight and far. And that's exactly how Rooks move in chess. They can move as far as they want, up and down, and side to side. If you have a hard time remembering that, just remember the Rook wrap. They go up, down, side to side, up and down, and you got it, side to side. Now, as you can see in the start of the game, the rooks are stuck. He can't go anywhere. There's a pawn in his way, a knight in his way. So if you want to get him free, you got to free the pieces in front of him. Now, as you get better at chess, you will learn some great strategies at getting your rooks out. But for right now, I'll show you the fastest way. But again, not necessarily the best. This pawn double jumps. This pawn double jumps. This rook is now free to come into the game. He goes up. This rook is free to come in the game. He goes down. This rook goes all the way across the board. He goes all the way across the board. And you see rooks in chess 
unlike pawns, they capture the same exact way that they move, up and down or side to side. So what can we do right now? Can anybody see? If you saw that this rook can now capture that rook, you are correct. He goes one and two and gobble, 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 gobble. And you have won a rook using your rook. So rooks are great pieces. They're actually the second most powerful piece in chess. I like to tell a true story from the old days about real live rooks. Once in a long time ago, there were two castles that were battling each other and one army could never penetrate the enemy castle. So what they did is they built a castle out of wood that they could all hide in. And they tried and they attacked the first time the enemy arrows could not get them because they were hidden in that castle of wood. But then that army got really smart and they started using fire arrows. So now that army, the next time they tried and the fire arrows hit, they had to jump out of their castle and retreat and try again. Did they give up? No. They went home and they built a metal castle. So now when they tried again, those fire arrows did not work at all. And they were able to hide in this metal castle and attack pretty well. But the next time they tried, the other castle was ready. They had built a deep water moat all around their castle. So when they tried attacking their metal castle, they could not pass that moat. See, it's like a real life chess game with both armies trying to outsmart one another. That's what chess is all about. Having a strategy, having a plan. All right, let's look at our next piece. The only piece in chess that can jump. The only piece in chess that does not move straight. He is called the knight. Let's take a look at our knight, shall we? This is our knight. He looks like a horse, but don't call him a horse. You will hurt his feelings. He is a knight in shining armor sitting atop his horse. Now you see these guys in real life were the fastest ones on the battlefield. They had a horse. They were bigger and mightier than everybody else. And they also had an advantage that they could jump over obstacles using their horse, which is why in chess, a knight is the only piece that could jump. They also would often weave in and out of the battlefield as necessary. They did not always march in a straight line like everybody else. So in chess, these guys will move in an L shape, all right? Let me demonstrate. They always go one square, two squares, and then turn and go one. One square, two squares, turn and go one. And yes, they capture the same way they move. All right, they can make any kind of capital L you can imagine. They can make a backwards L, a forwards L, a sideways L, any type of L. Notice how he's moving all around the board. Uh-oh, boom, he got him. Look at that L. In fact, if a knight is in the center of the board, they can make how many different types of L's? I want you guys to try to figure it out. So imagine this knight is sitting right here. How many L's can he make? Look, there's one. There's two. Can you figure out how many? I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about it. All right. If you said eight, you are correct. They are like an octopus. They can make eight different L's from the center of the board. And knights are awesome. In fact, they're one of my favorite pieces because they're great at doing sneaky moves like forks and Arabic checkmates. Stay tuned. So our knight is able to move any type of L he wants. Let's look at our next piece. Now back in the old days, the king and the queen often would have a bishop who actually worked in the church as their advisor, which is why you will see in the game of chess, the bishop is sitting next to the king and next to the queen. Now, if you forget how they move, all you've got to do is look at their head and you will see this diagonal line that goes diagonal right there through their hat. That is exactly how a bishop moves. Now a bishop can go as far as it wants through the corners as long as nothing is in his way. Let me demonstrate. Let's say white makes my favorite first move and double jumps. And black makes my first favorite first move for black and also double jumps. This bishop is now free to play. He can either go here, 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 or even here. Now who thinks that's a good idea? If you said no, you're correct because this pawn or this knight who we just learned about could both capture that bishop. You want to be really careful when you let go of your chess piece that he's on a safe square because if you let go, there's no going back in chess. Bishops can also go backwards. Let's say he doesn't take and he goes here. Our bishop is able to come back here, 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 or here and retreat. They can go any way as long as it's a diagonal way. The next piece we're going to learn about is the most powerful piece in chess. The most powerful ant in the ant colony. The most powerful bee in the beehive. That's right, the queen. 
You see, the queen is able to do almost anything. In real life, she was the king's wife. She often ruled the kingdom if there was no king. She was one powerful woman. And in chess, she can go up, she can go down, she can go side to side or diagonal. I like my queen rap. She goes up, down, side to side, and diagonal. All right, so as you can see, this queen is also like an octopus. She can move in eight different directions when she's in the middle of the board. So let's get our queens out, shall we? Let's say our queen goes to here. This queen can go to here. See, she's going diagonal. She can go to the side. She can go down. And yes, she can capture. Just like any other piece, she captures the way she moves. She can capture diagonally just like that. Gobble up the other queen and she is yours. And again, if you forget how she moves, you can look at her head and you'll see there's all sorts of different lines, up and down, diagonal, side to side. That will actually remind you how the queen moves. All right, next, last but not least, the most important piece in chess, he's not the most powerful by any definition. He is the king. In the old days, the king was the ruler. He was the big boss, and he was the one who knew where all the gold was hidden. Now, in a real life battle, they would almost never actually kill a king, because a king was the one who could tell his soldiers to stop fighting, and he knew where the gold was. In chess, you never capture the king. Now, the king can do whatever he wants. He's the king, but there's one problem. He's a slow poke. He can only move one square at a time. Let me demonstrate. One up, one down, one through the corners diagonal, one through the corners diagonal. But here's a trick with the king. He is not allowed to move into danger. It is actually against the rules of chess to move a king into danger. So if the king were to go to here, that would be against the rules. And the player who's playing the black army would have to say, hey, please take back your move and make a different move, all right? You cannot put a king into danger. So let's go through the pieces again, shall we? Rooks go up and down and side to side. Knights move in an L shape. Bishops go through the corners as far as they want. The queen goes up and down, side to side, and diagonal, and the king, he just moves one at a time. And our pawns we looked at first, on their first move they can go one or two. After that, they only go one at a time. And does anybody remember how the pawn captures? That's right, he captures diagonally. So if our pawn were to double jump, he would be able to just take us like this. So those are the chess pieces. I've actually been working on my world record of being able to stay the chess piece movements as fast as I can. You guys ready to hear it? All right, here we go. Rooks go up and down, side side, Nets go now, but you go through the corners, farther they want, Queen goes up and down, side side, and Dial, Kings one at a time, he wants Pongo, swim the first move, went after that, and captures through the corners, and no, that was not edited. <laughs> Alright, so, that is how all the pieces move. There's one more rule I'm going to go over with you guys really quick, and that is how you win a game of chess. If you can't take the king, a lot of people say, then how do you win? Well, there's this thing called a checkmate. And a checkmate means that you put their king in danger, so there's no way out. So I'm going to quickly show you guys the fastest checkmate of all time. It's called the two-move checkmate, also known as the fool's mate. And here's how it goes. It starts with the worst first move in chess. You see, in the start of the game, you want to control the middle, which is these four squares. You want to free your pieces from pawn prison. And we will talk about all that later. But for right now, just watch this terrible move take place. This pawn, we'll call him Frank, takes one step forward the worst first move you can make. The king now has a hole right in front of him. This does not control the middle very well, just barely controls that one square. It does not break any of your pieces. In fact, this knight actually lost one of his L's. He can't go there now because somebody is in his way. Now, black is gonna make a great response. They take their pawn and they put it right in the center of the board. They free their queen, they free their bishop. And white's pawns get jealous of one another. George says to Frank, Frank, you're a slowpoke. I'm faster than you. Frank says, no, you're not. George's like, yeah, I am. Watch. And you know what he does? What does he do? If you said double jump, you're correct. Woohoo! He double jumps right in front of him and says, I'm faster than you. And the king says, no, you silly pawns. You have made a wall right in front of me. And black sees the opportunity. I want you guys to try to find the checkmate. I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds to find a move that puts this king in danger so he has no way to get out. Ready, set, go. Do 
you see it? If you said, move your queen all the way down right here, we call this square h4 in chess, you are correct, because the queen is now aiming right at the king. Now let's see if the king can get out. If you're trying to get out of a checkmate, all you gotta do is remember this simple test. All you gotta remember is your a, b, c's. A stands for attack the attacker. Can we attack this queen? The pawn can't get him because pawns only take through the corners. This rook can't get him because he's stuck behind this pawn. And the king, he wants to get him, but you see the king, if you recall, is a slow poke. He only moves one at a time. He's like T-Rex, little tiny arms. Can he reach the enemy queen? No way. All right, B stands for block. Can these pawns block? Nope, pawns never go backwards. Can the knight block? No, he cannot. Can the rook block? He's stuck behind that pawn. Can the bishop block? He's not allowed to leave his color and he has to go diagonal, so he can't block. There is no way out. And this is a checkmate. The only other way to try to get out is C, which stands for chicken run. Does that work? And the answer is no, because wherever this king goes, the queen will get him. If the king goes to here, the queen just goes, hey, 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 now you're even closer to me. As you can see, she can still get him with her diagonal laser beam. If he tries to go backwards, he would fall off the board. So this is a checkmate, because they cannot A, attack the attacker, B, block with a bodyguard, or C, chicken run. This is actually the fastest game in the history of the universe. Well, now you know how to play chess. You know how the pieces move. You know how to win. So go try it out. Play against your mom, your dad, or anyone else you can challenge and have fun. Thank you for watching. It's time for Chess Trivia. I'm sure you learned a lot about the game of chess, and I bet you'll have fun practicing. Whether you have a chess board at home or not, you can also find chess online. So get practicing and have some strategic fun. So thank you again to Adam of Strategic Kids for that great lesson, and thank you for tuning in. It's our mission to bring these episodes into your home so we can bring a little joy and fun during this time of school closures. So we'll see you again soon on another episode of Life TV. Have a great day.